So Muhammad is very severe, and I don't know how to explain how severe he is, but he's pretty severe. So, so when you're a kid, and he got diagnosed at 14 months. Um, which is really early for a diagnosis. And you had to press to get that diagnosis. I had to press had to, to get that diagnosis. So I just want to be clear, you've been fighting this since he was a baby, fighting yeah. for him. Yeah, first, you know, I kept saying something's wrong with the kid, something's wrong with him. And they're like, oh, he's fine. You know, is he watching a lot of TV? You know, what are you doing? What can get me? I'm like, dude, there is something wrong with this child. This child has regressed. Mm -hmm. and. There was at one point, I remember I took him to like three different doctors and the last doctor, total hippie. She goes, maybe he's watching too much TV. Cause like, you know, she asked me how much TV he watches. I was like, yeah, he watches Dora the Explorer. You know, what's wrong with that, right? It's educational. I think TV is educational. And then she's like, maybe he's watching too much TV. I was like, you know what? That was it. Lady, there's something wrong with my kid. I'm not leaving until you tell him what's wrong with him. Mm -hmm. And then she went, She went and brought this paper. It's called the MCAT. It's 10 questions, I had no idea. And I just went and filled it out. It was like, does your son like look at you when you talk to him? No. Does your child play with other children? Does your kid babble? You know, and he, he couldn't do any of those things. And she looked at me and she's like, I think your son has autism. And that was the first time I'd ever heard about it, like other than Rain Man. And from that moment, she gave me this number and she's like, call this number, it's the regional center. You're like, what's a regional center? I was center? like, what's a regional center? And she's like, they can help you. And looking back to me from the minute, from the first moment of diagnosis, he got pawned off. From the first minute. And that's like how we would get, get, get punting from, punted from one place to another. I'd go to my health plan. I'd be like, okay, well, you got, I diagnosed him with autism. Yeah. How Treat are you gonna help him? Help, help yeah. him, right? They'd say, oh, well, we don't do that. Go to the school district, right? So then went to the school district and I asked them for services. And they're like, oh, well, we don't do ABA. We only do educational stuff. We do classroom, go to your insurance company. I just kept getting punted from place to place. I went back to my health plan. I'm like, you guys diagnosed with him with autism and you're sending me to the school district. If you diagnosed him with cancer, would you send me to the school district for treatment? Mm -hmm. It just didn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. Autism is a medical condition and it needs to be treated medically. So, and that was it. It just, it just, it wasn't because I knew anything about health insurance or knew anything about the laws or frankly knew anything about how to advocate. It's just that something wasn't right. Mm -hmm. And then I had a kid who was sitting at home, you know, banging his head against the wall that I had to help, you know, and I just had no choice but to do it. The field of behavior analysis, practicing specifically in the area of autism spectrum disorders and helping the countless individuals that our field now serves across the nation and across the globe is due to a specific small group, oftentimes of what Feta is talking about here of autism mom warriors. Unfortunately, it's a money-driven world and it takes advocacy and sometimes years of advocacy at the expense of children not receiving treatment and the struggles that those families face are not typically the face of autism that we see when it comes to Rain Man or uh, the current Netflix series and things that are out there. Unfortunately, this past week, um, we lost a very fantastic advocate for children with autism. Fade Alma leader and her son Muhammad passed away in a house fire tragically last Friday. And I had the opportunity, thanks to my uh, business partner Sarah, of meeting Feda. Um, and it led to an interview we conducted. She graciously opened her home for us to be able to document not only her her successes uh, but her hopes and wishes and 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 who she and Muhammad were and I just kept going after them at first all I wanted was occupational therapy I just said dude he can't eat yeah can you just teach him how to eat with a spoon and they were so resistant to even that 
My son at three years old was still drinking Pediasure from a bottle. You know, um, that's how he was getting all his nutrition through Pediasure. He was still completely on diapers. Um, he would only, you know, three foods, I'd call it the beige diet, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> chicken nuggets, yeah, crackers, <laughs> crackers, yep. and the Pedia shirts, the beige <laughs> diet. And um, this is before uh, Kim Kardashian made beige like a thing. Like, no, t yeah. totally before. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, but I'm sorry, I don't remember what I was talking about. Talking that you wanted for occupational therapy. Yeah, first, all I wanted the was plan. occupational therapy. All yeah. I wanted was to get this kid off a bottle. Literally, that's all yeah. I wanted. Like, let's, he needs to eat real food. But they were so resistant to even that, that I was like, you know what? I'm gonna ask for everything. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask for speech, occupational therapy, ABA, the whole shebang. I, at that point, never thought, I dreamed my whole life that I could get ABA covered by insurance. Mm -hmm. Like No one did. No one did. No, I, I mean, I just didn't even think it was a possibility. I was like, you know what? Screw it. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna ask for the whole thing. This is what he needs, you know? And I'd had issues with the school district and things like that before, so, but, to go up against your school district is one thing. To go up against a multi-billion dollar health plan is another thing. Yeah. You know, they have, you know, doctors and lawyers and lots of fancy arguments that they can use, you know, and they call things with like uh, ABA custodial care, mm -hmm. um, which I had to Google and look up because I yeah. didn't know any of that. Because you have to understand, I didn't even graduate from high school. You know, I just, wanted my kid to get some help, right? And they had all this literature that they were submitting and medical records to show that, you know, ABA wasn't medically necessary for Muhammad. And right. I only, it's experimental, it's, experimental, it's education. educational, yeah. it's custodial care, I mean, you name it. And I had nothing except I found a journal article was about the medical management of autism that said ABA speech and OT are like, kind of the gold standard treatments. Mm -hmm. um, and I wrote the reviewer a letter that was the independent medical reviewer. And I basically wrote them. I said, I know there's no cure for autism, but ABA, speech, occupational therapy are the best chance that my son will improve his quality of life. And, and I won and I couldn't believe it. That I won. How long did it take you to win? Oh, I mean, the process is not supposed to take that long, but because I, it took um, almost over a year. Yeah. In the short period of time that I got to know Veda from her opening her doors and welcoming us in, feeding us, allowing us to document her and her son's life, um, she taught me a lot. She reminded me of a lot of why we do the, the work that we do as behavior analysts in this field. And when I say we, I mean you all out there practicing. Um, but, but then what I admire about you and what I admire about so many other like autism mom warriors is you're like, you know what? This is great for Moo. <laughs> like this is going to be transformative for Moo and I'm really excited and it's great for our family. We're not the only ones. No. And it, this needs to be something that's extended to everyone. Yeah. Because it's not fair. It's not, every kid should be entitled to what Moo has. And, and that's true. But I knew not every single parent could do. Right. Had the bandwidth. The to do understanding, that. the resources, the support, everything. You know, and I think I told you this. Like, I love kids with autism and all, obviously, and I care about them and I want them to all get the treatment that they deserve. But really, I didn't want parents to suffer like I did. I didn't want one more family you know, to go through all those sleepless nights not knowing that if their kid's gonna make progress or if they can get the therapy for them. I just didn't want another mom or dad to go through what I went through. I cared about the kids, but I feel like people forget sometimes the plight of the parents. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to look at a kid with autism and feel sympathy for them. Yeah. It's a whole other thing to look at their families mm -hmm. and really understand what they go through. This is just a brief snapshot into a hour and a half where, where Feda and Sarah specifically sit down to talk about her story um, of how she had to fight giant multi-billion dollar organizations to be able to receive access to services for Moo. She also allowed us to capture a glimpse into her life of what it looks like having a child diagnosed with autism during a global pandemic. The pressures 
but the sheer like tenacity and, and will to move forward amidst everything that they've faced is just unbelievable. I hope that you have some time to dedicate uh, to learn like I did from Feta and Moo. We have the uh, full hour and a half freely available, will forever be freely available um, at the link below. Thank you uh, for taking some time. And if you don't mind, spread this around. There's, the world needs to see this. Thank you uh, for, for loving our girl. We loved her so much. Um, we thank you for loving her son. And we hope you enjoy this. But I know that I do everything out of love. Yep. For my kid, really. Yep. Like I am loyal to that kid. I know you are. You know? And I just this is ride or die shit right yeah. there. That's my dog. <laughs> That's my dog. Mm-hmm.